on the recent writings on that meditation that you posted, uh, where the discussion is going into uh, desire, and, um, and but along with that, you had also mentioned um, uh, intention and also you know desire and wanting to succeed at something and trying and that how that is also embedded within the ego tripartite mind and um and i have felt at times in my training where um where it's uh where it is more of the being that i don't don't feel that but there's also been times where um i'm trying to uh, impress or want to be, you know, want to do something right, or um, want to be, um, want something. And, um, and in those cases, I've, I've realized it's also when I'm suffering from other ego tripartite mind maladies. Um, however, when uh, I'm in those states, it seems like it's really difficult to dissolve that. So even when we talk about releasing and I remember there's been times where you have just said you need to release all your desire you need to all of your desire all of your desire and just like that just seems so monumental and it just seems well there's that's everything mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just really and so I, if you could speak on how um, what we can do in you know in those t times to help I don't know I said dissolve I feel is like the best because we're holding on or I'm holding on to that all right and so remember so the the question it was actually another um, um, patreon subscriber actually asked the same exact question um, and it's one that you have to first understand the question itself is produced by the ego tripartite mind, do you see? Because the question, if you look at the question, underneath it, you're going to see a dichotomous framework. You're going to see the self, right? And um, what's happening is that you, you kind of, I call it a language game. It turns into a language game that your mind, your intellect in particular, which is the ego tripartite mind, um, is trying to figure out how to solve this uh, transcendence of dichotomy, and it cannot do it, okay? And hence my phrase, which is the, the mind, which by which I mean the ego tripartite mind, so the, my phrase that I usually say is the mind cannot cure itself. So if you want to spell it out, the ego tripartite mind cannot stop being the ego tripartite mind, okay? And the question arises from that, and in that question, you're actually seeing the ego tripartite mind reifying itself in continuing its functioning because all it deduces is this makes no sense. Do you see? So... This lack of um, solutions, because the ego tripartite mind doesn't see the solution, this is lack of solutions and this reduction to solving only with the ego tripartite mind is really a um, product of modernity. Now, it was always, if you look historically, you're going to see caveats against this, which tells you that it's really a human thing and people have always made this mistake. Otherwise, pre-modern cultures would not have a caveat warning you about this mistake. Do you, you see that? But it's so prevalent today as modernity itself, as, as modern culture itself is a product of ego tripartite mind running rampant and unchecked, do you see? We're really doomed to this kind of thing um, um, because there's few, there's very, very few people who actually know how to get out of this, 
You see, there's very few people around, okay? There were always few people around, but it's now like you're looking for the chubacabra or something, you know? It's like, <laughs> or Bigfoot, you know? It's like that, that rare, okay? Um, and, but what pre-modern cultures did is they understood one, that the, what I call the ego tripartite mind is only one aspect of your being. And so training has to involve other aspects of your being, okay? Now we're in Budo and we're in Aikido and so we're looking really at Silk Road culture technologies of self. Got it? How did they solve for this, okay? is what I'm going to show you. And it's, you're going to know, oh yeah, I forgot about all that other stuff, okay? But you're going to see. But there's people out there that don't know this stuff, okay? But I'm telling you, as a historian of religion, it's in every single other, um, what I would call mystical tradition, okay? Every single religion solved for that problem, and they did it in the, the very same way, okay? And the first premise is, you are not only that mind, okay? And what they did by default was, is to tell you that mind is not only not all of you, but that is a lesser you, do you see? Or some aspect of you that you, you want to rise above, so it's a lower you, do you understand that? So for example, in uh, Judeo-Christian traditions, there was you, but there was your soul. And your soul had some sort of agency and consciousness to it uh, that was outside of that everyday Virginia sense of self, do you see? And you weren't entirely in control or in possession of that soul. That thing, that aspect of you didn't really belong to you. Do you, do you see that? So there's a, there was a part of you that was not that part, okay? And that part of you that was not that part is a greater you, is a truer you, and is what you're supposed to aim for, okay? In Silk Road cultures, um, uh, you, had, you had three parts of you, okay? So we would say you would have your, uh, and, and we can, cor and this corresponds to your training methodology, okay? So you have your physical part, and in the physical part is that material part, and is that ego tripartite part, okay? And then you have uh, what I call the energetic part, but sometimes I call it your alchemical part, okay? And then you have your spirit part. Now you have to be careful, um, because these are modern words, and they're, I use modern words so you as modern people understand them, okay? But I understand these in the pre-modern sense, okay? So when we talk about your physical self, we're not just talking about your body because we cannot separate your body from that ego tripartite mind because we cannot separate your experience of the body from that mind. Okay, and this is how in Silk Road cultures you would have like the Yogacara school, which would say everything is mind, or in modern philosophical schools, you have idealism. Okay, so I, I am never able to separate my experience of something from the thing that I am experiencing something through. So when we talk about physical, this is what, when I refer to your body-mind, okay? Your body-mind. You always think of that. You never, you're never that mind like modern psychology or modern neuroscience, do you see? You're always your body, your experience of your body. They, I can't get away, I, they're together, okay? And then when we talk about energy alchemical, we're not talking about your electricity. Uh, we're not talking about nerve endings or anything like that. Do you understand? This is, you, you're, you're not 
anything here. You're not anything that secular materialism could validate um, or seeks to validate, okay? So you're, you're really looking, sometimes you'll, you'll see, so I saw a video by uh, Damo today, and he likes to say your, your, subtle, your subtle aspects. Uh, um, <laughs> what does that mean, right? Okay, what you have to understand is once we get to these, and here's where that historian of a religion comes in. Once you get to these concepts, these are really apple, what are called apophatic concepts, okay? They're negative concepts, okay? So the way to understand what this is is to say it's not that and it's not that. And it's how it, it's just how it is, okay? Um, if you look, for example, you you let's say you go to the Buddhist concept of no self. You see how it has the no and self. It's an apophat, apophatic concept. Shunyata emptiness is is also an apophatic concept. So pre-modern cultures are really running not to irrationality, but pushing rational thinking to its limit, where the only way that a positive thing can be said is that some negative thing has to stand in contrast to it. It's an extension in Silk Road culture, it's an extension of yin-yang theory, okay? So for example, if you go to Taoism, um, they have, it's, it is uh, the hole in the wagon wheel that makes it useful. It's not the wheel itself. It's the emptiness in the hole that allows the axle to go in there, do you see? Um, and so while empty and while not material, it's actually, if there was no empty space for it, then the axle could not function, do you see? Or the emptiness in the cup is what actually creates the cup, not the cup itself. Do, do, do you see that? So you have that Taoist concept going. Okay, well, the same thing is going on in you. Now, if you want to say that the emptiness in the cup or the hole in the wagon wheel is a subtler part to the wheel, I'm not sure that is solving the problem that Damo is trying to solve. But he's trying to say that there is a concreteness or there is, let's say this, that emptiness in the cup is as real as the cup itself. Do you see that? So when he's trying to say that it's subtle, he do, he's trying to say that there's some substance to it, but it's not this substance that's so gross. Do, do you understand that? Okay. I get what he's saying. I've heard that that variant of expression. You can see it throughout history. They're trying to do that, but you can see that, for example, if you say um, there's yang energy and it's subtle, all, all you will try to do as a practitioner is try to really feel it. Do you, do you know what I mean? Uh, so what, what, with what, with this, do you, do you see that? So it doesn't really help uh, in my opinion, okay? But it makes sense, I'm not saying it's wrong, okay? Th these are apophatic concepts. So this is not that and not this, but this is not that and that either, okay? Or another way of saying, if you wanna put it in positive terms, uh, everything else that is not this or that is this. Okay, and I'll tell you why they reached that conclusion, because we're working backwards. It looks like we're working forward in understanding this, but we're actually working backwards, okay? Because this is not how it starts, and sometimes when you train, you think that this is like a linear progression, do you see? Just like Shu Hadi, so you'll hear modern, modern Aikidoka will uh, talk about this 
and they will understand it materially of this level and they understand it as a linear progression. You start with Shu, then you go to Ha, and then you go to We. The, and that is not how that Buddhist theory works, okay? This stuff happens concentrically, which means it's not linearly, it's simultaneously. So if you're in your being, you are doing this simultaneously uh, in your training. You don't go, I'm going to learn a form, and then I'm going to break the form, and then I'm going to reconcile form and non-form. It either happens all at once, or it does not happen ever, okay? So, I have to do all this at once. What's happening to the beginner is the beginner can only function at this level, okay? And as I said, if we're looking at this, you're going to think that it's a line and you're going to think it goes this way, but I'm going to show, I'm going to tell you that it does not. Okay. I'm just get there. All right. So but first let's move here. This energetic alchemical thing is, um, there are aspects of you that are not this, the, what are they? They are you inside of the larger cosmic order of things. Okay, so for example, um, in Silk Road cultures, uh, the creation act happened according to a natural order of things, okay? And that process, which you've heard me refer to as the Genesis Act, the Genesis Act is happening in you on a regular basis over and over and over again, okay? Uh, what does that mean? So we'll stick to the Taoist tradition. Uh, the Tao is in you and the Tao is constantly materializing into yin and yang aspects of you. But you can reverse that such that you reconcile the yin and yang aspects in you and you'll come to the undone stage or the Tao stage or the pre-Genesis stage, okay? You're looking at a cosmological act of moving from nothingness to somethingness. Well, you can reverse that act and you're going to go from somethingness back to nothingness, okay? Or in Judeo-Christian, uh, you got your ass kicked out of the garden, do you see? And because you learned about uh, the, the knowledge uh, that you, you had, you ate of the tree of knowledge, and so you had dichotomous thinking, right? Good and bad, good and evil, right and wrong, to all this all dichotomous thought, and you had your identity in there, you, ha you have your fear and your will to power, and what you're supposed to do is undo all that and get back into the garden. Who's in the garden? God's in the garden. You see, now you're chilling out with God. Or take it outside of the narrative, you are in communion with the divine. So communion with the divine, one with the Tao, loss of self, same exact thing, okay? So what these Silk Road cultures did is they said, hey, uh, you can actually tap into that natural order of things, that Genesis Act, and you can start to use that tapping in to change this part of you, okay? And to develop this part of you, okay? So this, this part here, and I'll get, I know that sounds abstract to you. This part here, is a necessary middle ground that modern religion has done away with. Okay? We, we don't know this stuff anymore. Okay? Um, and so when you look at modern religion, you have like, okay, I'm gonna get, you know, or wellness systems. I'm gonna get really fit and I'm going to go into therapy and I'm going to have a therapist and then I'm going to be fine. Do you see that? And, uh, well, let's, let's track for that. Yeah, let's track for that. No one ever gets out of therapy 
everyone gets on medication and more medication and more medication. It doesn't look like it's yielding results, do you see? Do you get it? And we normalize self-medication, so alcohol, um, at-risk behaviors and things like that, do you see? And we normalize numbing ourselves to the environment because the environment is so stressful, do you see? All, all it, there's, it's not working, okay? Because the mind cannot cure the mind, okay? And then we have this sense of spirit, but the, our modern sense of spirit is so abstract. It is so abstract that you're only filled with doubt and it never goes away. And uh, it doesn't hold when the shit hits the fan. It holds under ideal conditions, okay? And it's kind of philosophical, which is this, do you see? So take for modern day Vedanta, I told you, if you listen to the New York Vedanta instructor, he's basically just using this mind and he's trying to reach a rational understanding and everyone is convinced, apparently I will understand uh, uh, Vedanta to such a degree that I'll finally stop suffering, do you see? And oh, I'm still suffering. I must not understand it to the degree necessary. You see, this is bullshit. So in Buddhist terms, I'm going to philosophically be able to out-argue anybody on the doctrine of no self and emptiness. Do you see? Well, I'm supposed to be suffering free, but I'm not. I, I, oh, I must not realize it enough. Do you see? That's what they're doing, okay? Why do we do this and why do we have this abstract, airy, intangible thing that has no integrity, no viability under stress is we don't have this anymore. Okay. And in this dojo, we do have this. And in Silk Road cultures, you did have this. And also in Judeo-Christian traditions, you did have this again. So for example, the word alchemical is not Silk Road culture uh, terminology. This is Judeo-Christian terminology. Do, do you understand that? So when you hear, for example, uh, uh, when Damo's saying inner alchemy, like that's not Chinese. Do you, do you understand this? This is al al alchemical investigations and studies. They go way back and they're Middle Eastern moving into Europe. Okay, got, got that? Um, it's not, it's not the word that, uh, it's in, 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 um, in Silk Road cultures, it's not pre-chemistry. Do you, do you, do you understand that? That's not, they, it, it's a good translation of what Silk Road cultures are doing, but this is an actual cultural practice from another culture. Okay, and it, and, but it's working in the same way on the same things, okay? So, since I can't stop my desire here, do you see? I can start working on this thing here, which is outside of this, do you see? I can work on myself alchemically or energetically to start gaining moments of cessation of this mind, okay? Now I'm telling you we're working backwards. This is my experience, okay? I can only talk about my experience, and but my experience here is my personal experience and my research experience, okay? And my research experience and my personal experiences, this happens first. At some point, You become primed, I don't know how or why. In, in uh, subcontinent Indian tradition, they, they would say your karma got you there. Okay, and now I want you to understand karma philosophically. What it means is, I don't know why. There are so many countless lifetimes and cause and effects that they're incalculable, but they must have fell in place because there is a law and cause and effect. They must have fell in place 
and you were primed to have a glimmer or a moment where this mind stopped on its own. Now that might sound weird to you, but not to a pre-modern person. That has to be possible. The ego tripartite mind must be able to stop. Do you see that? Otherwise, there's no point in this. It must be an aspect of the ego tripartite mind, in other words. And that potential to stop erupts. It just does. It just does. Why karma? Okay. So at some point, you will have glimmer of its cessation. Now, that might sound super weird and rare, but think about it. It is nothing more than a, uh, a reconciliation. This is, so I put it in modern terms, modern philosophical terms. It is a reconciliation of the subject-object dichotomy. That is how to understand the ecstatic experience. So let's, you probably, that word will be more understood, understandable to you. An ecstatic experience. Have you ever in your life had a sense of a loss of self? I bet you did. It happens all the time in just normal lives. You see nature, your first kiss, your first love, you dance the whole night away. It could be chemically induced. Do you understand? Do, do you guys get that? Okay. For some people, it just hits them. There's no, there, it just comes out of nowhere. Okay. In Zen, you have all these kind of things where, I don't know, a crow went by, and boom, and the dude had the experience, right? Or Brad Warner said he was on that bridge and it just happened to him. Do you see? Just like I mentioned, the soul is not in your possession nor in your control. These eruptions of the cessation of the ego tripartite mind are not in your control. They just happen. That is actually what happens first. And from there, you can start to build this in my experience. You, you don't go this way. You get your eruptions. And then you go, oh, I can actually gain some awareness or some, some mind experience of this happening, okay? You have this, you have a feeling, let's use that word, I use that word a lot. You have this, you had an experience, you felt the experience, do, do you understand? You did. You didn't cause it. You didn't intend to have it. You didn't realize it. You didn't reach the penultimate intellectual understanding of some complex philosophy. It happened to you. So it had a feeling of it. You had some sense of it. Do you see? That feeling is what you're doing here. And in my experience, this training brings an agency to that feeling. Meaning, whereas initially it may have erupted out in my feeling, in my experience, beyond my control, through this training, I can actually bring an agency to it. I can make it happen again, and I can keep it happening as long as I want, and I can continue to to have it again, regardless of the environment that I'm in, okay? And this is what I mean when I say, this actually happens the other way. And it, as somebody that is first exposed to this, this comes first, then you get this, you bring some agency to this, do, do, you, understand? do you get that? Okay, but when you pay attention, remember I said it happens simultaneously, concentrically, it does, it does, it happens concentrically, simultaneously. But in terms of training, this will happen, and then this develops agency in it, and that allows you to have this manifest itself simultaneously as whatever you're doing, okay? And so, this part is not this mind, okay? This part here 
is not the mind that is even capable of desiring. This part here is a part of you. This is in you. That's why you can do this training. That's why you can have this experience. The soul is a part of you. Do you see? You can have an experience of soul. It's not you causing it. It's happening to you. You didn't generate the feeling. You're just feeling it as it's happening to you. So when you're doing this training, you're not doing this. And you are, because you have to be, in a desireless state. So your question is, how do I, how do I stop my desires? That is this question from here, do you see? What you do instead is you do this training. You do this training. This training is not that mind. This training is that other part of you, which I call the God mind, okay? This part is what I call when this mind stops, okay? So what you are learning is how to stop that mind. Here, it happened to you. Here, you're bringing agency to the cessation of that mind. Do you see that? Now, when you go, I am desiring to stop the mind. Oh, that's that mind. Don't do that. Instead, let the yin, let the yang aspect into your body. Do you see? Let it in. Don't make it come in. Don't want it to come in. Get out of the way. It will come in. This is the natural workings of the universe. You're obstructing it from coming into you. So, for example, the person comes, the person pushes in Kihon Waza, right? They're tasked with spinal displacement, right? Everyone got that? And then you go, I'm going to let the yang aspect in. Well, that is when you do all of the things that you know you're not supposed to do. You stop them from coming in. That's a desire, do you see? And when you stop them from coming in, you tense up, do you see? And when you tense up, you're blocking the yang aspect from coming in, and you start to adopt bracing angles and external engines, and you're doing all this kind of stuff. Do you, do you get that? So, if we take the Judeo-Christian, they're like, God damn it, I can't freaking do it. There is something here that you need, and that is faith. Faith is not belief, okay? That, that's how we understand it now. Faith is a skill, do you see? Do you get it? Faith is the skill that I, in modern terms, have called release. Do you, do you get that? So, that thing is coming in, and you're like, uh, I'm pushing on my, I, I feel it in my shoulder, I feel it in my bicep, I can't let it come in. You could answer it from my modern terms, which is, uh, you're not releasing it enough. You don't have faith, okay? You don't have skill yet at disappearing, okay? as letting go, of releasing, of trust, okay? Now, think about this, for example. How many times have you seen it? How many times have you felt it? Do you see? You, you, you have somebody right there that you can touch that can do that thing that you're being asked to do. Do you, do you understand that? But it's not enough, okay? Which is why I'm telling you, this does not mean belief, okay? If you understand faith and the skill of release, as a skill, as a necessary skill, then you have to do the work that develops the skill. You cannot go, I just want to stop desiring. I, want, I desire to stop desiring. It doesn't work, do you see? 
You have to do the work that develops the skill, okay? So, this is where all those practices come in and why all of those practices actually function to, in a way, contest the self, okay? So we're gonna take this part here and we're gonna take the other word, we're gonna use another tradition and we're gonna call that the self. Like in the Buddhist tradition, the self, okay? All of your practices work where you cannot keep the self. How so? The four disciplines. You, you cannot stay the same and practice the four disciplines faithfully, religiously, in modern terms. Do you get it? With 100% devotion. If you pay attention, yeah, right? If we were graded on a curve, you're probably like 50%. Do you, you know what I mean? Okay, 50% in modern terms, that's an F, right? Okay. Um, daily training, right? Or daily training at the training equations. Four to six hours, you cannot remain the same and train every day four to six hours. You cannot. So if you hold that, and I think I wrote about this recently, the reason you hold that is precisely because just like a yang energy, the monastic code, so to speak, is a kind of yang energy. Are you going to contest it or are you going to yield to it? Do you see? Um, the All the dojo etiquette. You got to get rid of yourself to, to do it all at all times. Do you see? I mean, how many times... You think yes, sensei is easy as a response, but how many times do you hear training? The answer is yes, sensei. Do you see? And then it can't just be verbal, can it? It's it's actually a spiritual yielding. Do you see? Let go, man. Um, you also have the practice of servitude. How much do we actually do that? And when and with whom? Do you see? Do we only do it with strangers? Remember, we had that talk before, right? It's easy to serve strangers, but man, serving my spouse, who's a total bitch, do you know what I mean? Like, fuck no, fuck that. Do you know what I mean? Or the kids, right? We talked about the kids uh, where we want to be on high and shout down orders at the kids and have them as opposed to what, what work do I need to do to help this child? What what physical effort and exhaustion rate do I have to produce in myself to assist this child? You see, that's different, okay? And then you broaden that out, right? Such as my, my work practice is yes. You, someone asked me, yes. You see, someone at work asked me, the answer is yes. It's just yes. And then you go do the work, right? Do you guys understand that, okay? Now, it's easy to try at first for a while. You're like, I'm gonna be the person at work that always says yes, do you see? And so for a while you're like, okay, good, I feel good about myself, do you see? And they're gonna, but what you need to do is keep doing it. You need to keep doing it so that you realize I'm never going to be recognized and a lot of these people hate me precisely because I say yes. And you keep saying yes, and you keep saying yes, okay? It's kind of like Zazen. Almost anybody can sit still for like 30 seconds or two minutes, do you see that? You gotta sit there until this mind is screaming, get the fuck up and start singing the stones. You, you know what I mean? And then keep going and keep going, okay? These are all practices that trigger the self. And if you pay attention, there's a, part of you that does know that because we don't follow them the way we're supposed to follow them. Okay. So when you look at Nage Uke, it's just a microcosm of that very process. There is a way to do the Kihon Waza, do you see? But that way requires that this has to be let go. Okay. So for example, 
you desire the throw, right? We, a lot of that was stop, stop trying to, oh, there's the head, throw the head. Do you see that? Just do this and let the throw be an incidental consequence or coincidence of this. Do you see? Do you guys get that? Or um, you're doing, we're doing the sparring class. And how many techniques were you trying to do? Do you see? No, 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 no. Just do this and the techniques will reveal themselves. Do you see? This idea, this service idea, or this idea, or, or the philosophy, or the, 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 the technological science behind all of these monastic aspects of training is really just yoga. So, and I mentioned this because this is the most clearest example of, of how and why these monastic codes work, okay? It's karma yoga. So you go back to the Bhagavad Gita, right? And they're like, dude, you're a prince and you're a warrior. You're going to kill some fuckers. That's your job. Do you see that? But you're not going to be attached to the fruits of the labor. So I'm going to do the cosmological order of things. Do you see that? Without going, there's the head. You need me nugget, bitch. Do you, you get what I'm saying? I just do this. Do you guys understand that? And so in that moment when you could throw the head, but you just do this, you practice a release. Do you see that? And the moment when um, you veer in the four disciplines or you veer in your service, or when you feel that I'm saying yes so that people like me and I get appreciated and I get the recognition, do you see? That's your opportunity to keep doing it without it, okay? And it's a skill. So which means, how long do you do this for? Your whole life, do you see? It's not a state, it's a skill. You do it all, all day long, every day, and then you die, okay? That's how it works. Your idea of there being a state is a desire. You're like, I want to finally stop because this shit is exhausting, do you see? No, keep going. Okay. This sense of exhaustion and this keep going, do you see? Is and and Kobun is gonna actually refer to it with St. John's terminology. This is the dark night, you see. When when this mind is being attacked by practices that do not reify the self but deconstruct the self to develop this skill, this mind will feel attacked. It'll feel lost, depressed. It will rebel, do you see? But you keep going. Okay? That's the dark night. And in every single, so here we have a modern Zen monk using the phrase, the dark night, do you see? That monk, Kobun, his father was a Zen priest. He went to a, a Buddhist university. He trained under some of, uh, um, trained under Kodo, who is probably the last great Zen hermit, okay? And he's using St. John's phrases because it's in Zen too. You're going to hit this moment where I just feel like this is not working, this is lost, I should stop. Do you get it? But no, you keep going. You keep going, okay? So this mind can never stop desiring. But these practices, these aspects of you are outside of that mind. So these practices are outside of your desire. In fact, when you desire these, you're just back here. Okay. So you're, when I say just rock the spiral rotation of your tandem, do you see? You, that's a choice. You could do that. Or you could go, I'm going to do the Iminage on them. Do you see that? And when you just go with the spiral rotation 
of the Tom Den, you're in that feeling. It's just a feeling you keep. This feeling, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep the feeling. The technique will reveal itself. Okay. Not you, it just happens. Why? That's how the cosmos works. It's just how it works. Well, that's convenient. Yeah, it is. But it's how it works. So all things that work, that's convenient. Okay? So, and the reason you go, well, that seems like a circular argument, and I don't really get it. Again, that's this. The reason pre-modern cultures landed on this is because it started here. Whoa! What the fuck just happened? Do you understand? <laughs> You're not going to go, oh, nothing. Do you see that? This, this mind goes, nothing, nothing. It doesn't want you to do that. That's why this... Culturally, historically, this side is demonic, meaning this side is antithetical to this, do you see? So it's going to go, no, 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 that does not exist. Don't go looking, don't be there. Don't you feel like shit? Yeah. Do you see that? But people that do this usually get something like this. There's some context for those spontaneous ecstatic moments. Right? So, for example, I don't know, I used to be a dancer. Ever dance all night? Ever dance all night? And you're like, I've had, I've had those, man. Those are the best nights around, man. You know, you're, Whoa. you know what I'm talking about? But there's no context for it. You just go, well, that was fun. <laughs> Stop looking. Instead of you going like, where did the, holy cow, I lost track of time. You see, but other cultures had context for it. And your Budo training gives you context for it. So you have had moments, as you said, where you're out here and the things just work. Do, do you get it, right? I've, I've seen you do that. Hey, that's exactly it. Stop doing that other thing. Just let it happen. And you get, you, 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 I don't know, what, just the recollection. It's usually like your last three or four reps. And the, because I usually call it like that. No, because you're going to go back to do the other thing. You've heard me say, let's end on a positive note, you see. Because it erupted, it, you had it. You had it. Do you get it? Okay, so it, there's a context for it. And now you have to keep replicating the feeling. And then you bring agency to it. Okay? Now, most places don't have a context for it. They do this, they do the other thing. Oh, we had some alcohol and it was just great music, you see. They're going to look at it not as what happened to my mind and the sense of time and the loss of self. There's no context for it. And so they don't look for it. They don't recognize what happened, do you see. They don't have a technique that just revealed itself. And it gets worse because you have a choreographed uke. There's... It's not the technique revealed itself. Uke made it happen. Do you see? And so that uke that's choreographed is, can never, ever give you this stuff. The choreographed uke is this corruption here. The ego tripartite mind has taken over contemporary Aikido. That's what everyone does. Do you see? And the art now becomes at best symbolic or metaphorical. That's all it is. So let's combine this with uh, the other Patreon thread on Tissier's Irimunage, okay? I don't know if you saw it, but you guys should have noticed that Uke is not falling when the Yang hand comes, do you see? The, the Yang hand, that Yang hand does not have the power to throw anybody except someone that it could physically overpower. Do you see that? Because Uke is standing still, and then you push him over. Do you, do you get it? So you're, how much do you weigh, Virginia? 130. 130, and how tall are you? Three. You're never gonna push me over by doing this on my head. Do you, do you get it? I don't, can you reach Chris? How tall are you, Chris? 6'2". Six 6'2", two. Six two. can you reach Chris's head? You, you know what I mean? 
Do you get it? And so what you're seeing is a, a mechanic, an external mechanical engine that appears to function. Why is it function? Because Uke is going to do their flip for you. Do you see? And if Uke is doing their flip for you, that means Uke is in control of themselves. Do you understand that? Uh, and so Uke is not in Kazushi. Do you see? And so none of this stuff is, is functioning. It just appears to function. Do you see? And so all Uke has to do is, is obey the cue. You feel a little pressure here, Uke. Go ahead, turn inside my technique, and throw yourself over yourself. Do you get it? In the Nibinaga basic that we have, this hand on the neck does that spiral rotation, remember? And so by the time this hand comes in, Uke is already falling, do you see? And I am just doing the spiral rotation in the tanden. So I have this hand on the neck, right? So I'm doing that and then I'm coming around. When I enter, I'm doing it on the other side of my body and Uke happens to fall, okay? Or tactically, Uke was already falling by the time the yang hand came in, which is the only way I can reconcile this yin and yang, right? If Uke is standing still, that's yang yang. If Uke is going forward, that's yang yang. Uke has to be going backwards for me to enter. There's no yin space for me to me if Uke is not already going backwards. Do you, do you get that? And so that I'm reconciling this, I'm working at this level, as opposed to, I kind of touch him on his face, turn inside and throw yourself, okay? There is a way, however, if you don't want to use this hand on the neck, to generate this same thing with, one, with the lead hand, okay? And you actually do it in Tenshi Nage, so there's no reason why you can't do it in Irimi-nage either, okay? But it's not his way, okay? What we have to do is reproduce the same effect that this hand was doing with this hand. Do you get it? All right, let's work on that. <laughs> 